Cher welcomes the Jackson 5 in Lily Tomlin tonight at 7.30, 6.30 Central on CBS. Chief Davis says the suspect in the slasher murders will be charged. We'll have an exclusive interview. Mariner 10 got so close to Mercury it almost hit the planet. We'll have film of the live transmission. And the DWP is being questioned about that billion dollar oil price fraud. I'm Warren Olney. I'll have the news. Jim Murphy has sports. And we'll report on a dog show where it's easier for you to see the participants than it is for them to see you. Yes, Mom, it is early, but I knew you'd be up in weekdays. It's cheaper to call long distance before 8 a.m. What are you doing? Calling home. I need money again. Under the covers? Well, I didn't want to wake you. Right, Mom. Before 8, when you dial direct and don't use the operator, you can talk to anywhere within California for six minutes or even New York for four minutes for less than a dollar. Oh, and uh, while we're on the subject of dollars... Dial before 8. It's cheaper. To his neighbors, he's a nice guy who loves his garden. To his business associates, he's a tough guy who's fought his way to the top. He's had to do some of that fighting over client lunches. He's not only tough, he's smart. Smart enough to know that in a fine restaurant, you don't use a bank card. He uses carte blanche because he won't pay for a client's meal with the same card he uses to charge a bag of fertilizer. Carte blanche for those times when you mean business. Delicious chili dogs. Terrific tacos. Just 29 cents at Pup and Taco. Good evening. One of the highest officials in Los Angeles has confirmed that a slasher suspect is in custody, although he did not say what role the suspect is thought to have played. Los Angeles Police Chief Ed Davis told Channel 2 News today some legal charges will be brought against 31-year-old Vaughn Greenwood in connection with the slasher murders. Greenwood has been held for the past six weeks in connection with a knife and hatchet attack on two men in the Hollywood Hills on February 2nd. Key investigators assigned to the slasher case met behind closed doors most of the day at Parker Center. There was no official comment on just what they were discussing. But across town, Chief Davis was more enlightening to reporter Nathan Roberts. Uh, tomorrow at 11.30, we will conduct a, uh, a discussion of this in the auditorium of Parker Center. And all the media will be invited, and, and we will discuss it as fully as we can. Uh, the media has been working hard and uh, picking up a little bit here and a little bit there, and they have some pretty good stories. <laughs> and I don't want the speculation about this man to interfere with his right to a fair trial. And so I will have the district attorney or his representative there, and, and we'll tell you all that we can say about the case at that time, because it will be uh, in the judicial system very soon. When you say it will be in the judicial, judicial system, do you mean that Greenwood will be charged with the slasher murders? Yes. Uh, to what extent and, and precisely in what way we can tell you some of that tomorrow and then some of it is going to have to come out during, uh, during the trial process. The district attorney's office has declined to comment on the matter at this point. There have been nine victims in, series, in the series of murders following the pattern of the slasher. Each bore the slasher's trademark, a throat wound, or some other evidence linking it to the ritualistic murders. There have been no slasher murders in the past six weeks, the period that Greenwood has been in jail. Greenwood was picked up at his home following the February 2nd hatchet attack on William Graham and Kenneth Ricker at Graham's Hollywood Hills home. The victims said they were awakened early that morning by a man armed with a knife and a hatchet. Both Graham and Ricker were injured in the attack, Graham critically, when he crashed through a plate glass window during the struggle. The attacker avoided a police dragnet by running into the Hollywood Hills. Greenwood was arrested the following day at his home in South Central Los Angeles. He's been held since that time under $50,000 bail. Early morning house fires in the Los Angeles basin have killed two people and injured five others. 37-year-old Curtis Townsend perished in his rear bedroom. His mother, son, and two stepsons were injured. Two highway patrolmen helped in rescue efforts. Total damage is estimated at $16,000 to home, car, and contents of the house. All the injured suffered smoke inhalation. They did not suffer burns. 
The second blaze was in El Segundo. 18-year-old Steve Burnett collapsed and died before reaching his front door. The father, 49-year-old George Burnett, is hospitalized with burns and cuts. Their house was destroyed. Firemen have not discovered the origin of this $15,000 blaze, but they think that it started in the kitchen. Mariner 10, battered by its 16 months of exploring space, dipped to less than 100 miles from the surface of Mercury today, and it got excellent pictures. It was Mariner's third pass over Mercury and its final mission. Jet Propulsion Laboratory says we got close, but not too close. The main thing is that we didn't hit it. Reporter Nathan Roberts talked with the director of flight projects, Robert Parks. Parks was asked what they were hoping for, what would be new in today's pictures. As you know, this is the third time we will have been by Mercury. So in the pre previous two uh, encounters, we've gotten coverage of the full half-lighted uh, part of, uh, of Mercury already. Now, uh, these will add much higher resolution pictures of a, of a few limited areas, particularly up near the North Pole of uh, the, the planet. We've seen some areas up there that are very interesting uh, uh, from the standpoint of the fact they have different cre uh, features on them, such as scarps and so on in that particular area. These are big sort of canyons that indicate that the uh, uh, part of the uh, surface has been affected uh, probably by shrinking the uh, s surface of the planet. Uh, with the core shrinking underneath to it, it has to squeeze the surface and it causes big uh, uh, effects, uh, geological effects of that uh, character. So that was a particularly interesting area to uh, get additional coverage of, and because we're coming so close to the planet this time, on purpose, uh, we will be able to get a factor of two or three improvement in the resolution of those limited areas. Now, as the scientists in Pasadena begin the long work of analyzing the photos, the 1,000-pound Mariner will speed on for a few days, and then, with its fuel exhausted, it will tumble into space. The U.S. Customs Service has confirmed reports that the federal government is investigating a possible oil price fraud that has cost consumers billions of dollars, and part of the probe is here in Los Angeles. John Russell, an oil buyer for the DWP, says he has been visited three or four times by investigating agents. He would not confirm a report by the Washington Post that the targets are energy crisis oil purchases of $25 a barrel, five times more than the cost before the Arab embargo, but Russell did tell Associated Press there were two such purchases, one from Carrillo Brothers in New York, the other from Coastal States Marketing in Houston. More reports tonight about the whereabouts of Patty Hearst and film that may show mysterious energy flows that are claimed to make acupuncture work when we continue. Father O'Flaherty, he hates fish. Mrs. Boyle, I love all of nature's little creatures. I just love fish a wee bit less than the others. He hates it. Here, try each salt fish. My good woman, fish tastes fishy. Not each salt fish. Mm. It doesn't taste fishy at all. Sure, it's delicious. Divine. Still hate it, Father. Used to hate it, till I ate it. Oh. Bingo. Each salt doesn't taste fishy. Seven hours. Seven up, seven up, we see the light of seven up, seven up, seven up. The incredible new Volkswagen Rabbit. Averages 38 miles per gallon down the highway. Goes from zero to 50 in a snappy 8.2 seconds. Costs only $29.99. And it's easy to wash. Happy days are here again. Since the introduction of Vons Value Pricing, nearly 200,000 more grocery shoppers shop at Vons each week. I shop at Vons because I have a family of four and their prices are a lot lower. It's a fact. Recent consumer surveys show Vons among the lower price of all major supermarkets. And here's an example of Vons store-wide value pricing. St. Patrick's Day Special Corned Beef Brisket Point Cut Just a Dollar Eight a Pound at Vons. News reports about Patty Hearst have popped up like spring flowers from coast to coast. Time magazine says Patty and her SLA friends, Bill and Emily Harris, 
hit out in Las Vegas and New York, in addition to the Pennsylvania farm. Sport, <coughs> pardon me, sports figure Jack Scott is again said to have seen them, but the FBI says it has no warrant for Scott and still wants only to find Patty and her friends. And the Bureau has no comment about two other reports. The Chicago Tribune says fingerprints were found in a New York apartment, and the San Francisco Examiner claims the fugitive's trail has led back to the West Coast. Miss Hurst's father, of course, publishes the Examiner. The ancient healing art of acupuncture says there are flows of energy along the body. Sickness occurs when the energy gets out of balance. Acupuncture heals by restoring the balance. Western doctors don't believe it, but a researcher at UCLA thinks she may have figured out how to photograph the energy itself. Dr. Thelma Moss uses a special contact process called Curlian photography, and she showed her movies at a conference on healing this weekend at UCLA. First, she showed that the emanations from an injured finger were different from those coming from a healthy one. Then she showed the effects of acupuncture, which appears to restore a balance. The injured finger on the right shows far more brilliance and breadth than the emanations from her healthy finger, which is what we have typically found. Dr. Ledegerber helped in this research by treating the subject on both arms at the point which is located here to see the effect it might have on the fingers. While the needles were still inserted, movies were again taken of both fingers, and almost immediately we can see that the imbalance has become far less. In fact, it's almost disappeared. Both fingers are flaring almost equally. This, again, is in accordance with acupuncture theory. After these pictures were taken, the needles are removed, and about 10 minutes were allowed to pass in order for the therapy to take effect. Then, again, curly and moving pictures were taken. The healthy finger is actually a great deal brighter now than the injured finger. Clearly, acupuncture treatment has had a dramatic effect it would be nice to say that the pain had disappeared as well, but unfortunately, there was a residual amount of pain. Nobody really knows what those emanations on the film really are, but they do change the way acupuncture theory says they would if they were pictures of the energy that acupuncturists say is the key to their practice. The second part of the conference on healing will be April 19th and 20th at UCLA. John Dean, the White House lawyer for President Nixon, says he has ended his campus tour, and he ended it last night in Santa Ana. But the echoes linger. Our reporter, Nathan Roberts, was present for the last hurrah. Nathan? The insatiable appetite that we Americans still seem to have for any news of Watergate and those connected with it was evident last night at Santa Ana College. After a lecture of over an hour before a packed house of 3,000, John Dean opened the floor to questions, and there were plenty of them. One question on the minds of many was, why is Dean accepting such huge fees for his lectures? It's reported he received $3,500 for his appearance last night. Fee I get, I get a little over half of that uh, after the agents take their cuts. And it's just very simple. I can't afford to speak for free. I'm trying to pay off some debts. I'm trying to get back where I was after 16 months of working with the government. Well, I did nothing but work with the government uh, and not any other employment. And four months in prison, I went in debt. Well, President Ford pardoned the big three of Watergate, Haldeman, Ehrlichman, and Mitchell. Dean had this surprising answer. You've got to remember that a man like John Mitchell is still a very powerful man. Uh, people forget how close he was, and maybe still is, I don't know, to Nelson Rockefeller, a relationship that went back over a long span of time. And if, I'm sure if, if John Mitchell wanted to pick up the phone and, and, and get a hold of Rockefeller, he'd have no hesitation doing it. Or, or would there be any reason that he couldn't get through? So these are, these are men who still, still have power in that sense. Still on the subject of pardons, Dean was asked his reaction to the pardon of Richard Nixon. And he was asked if he feels that Nixon has suffered enough in the Watergate matter. What, what has amazed me and distressed me is that Ford did not ask for so much as an ounce of truth out of Richard Nixon in exchange. As far as whether I think he's been punished enough, I don't think that Richard Nixon is a free man today. I think he's got to be a prisoner of his own conscience, and I think he will be until he comes forward and speaks the truth about what went on. 
Last night, John Dean was, as he has been ever since the Senate Watergate hearings, repentant about his role in the scandal. He repeated his often quoted statement that ambition led to his part in the cover-up. But he left the mostly young college crowd in Santa Ana with a message. He said he hoped they will not lose their ambition. And in Dean's words, I hope you will keep your heads better than I did. Now that they've lived through the experience of Watergate, it's a fair bet that they will. Warren? We hope so. Thank you, Nathan. In a moment, we'll have an extended shaggy dog story to go along with our shaggy sportscaster. He'll report on a big win for a sports hero who's been losing for quite a while. Actress, you know, I'm just an over 60 retired lady. It's been a rather seesaw life with me, way up the financial ladder and then down. I once had over $30,000, but I lost most of it in very bad investments. So today I have to live on much less than $300 a month. People should really learn to save at a place like U.S. Life Savings. For a free book on retirement planning, stop by any office of U.S. Life Savings. You know, life is up and down. And you think the ups are always going to stay that way, but they don't. Accounts at U.S. Life Savings now insured up to $40,000. We asked people how Tums works to relieve occasional heartburn and acid indigestion. From time to time, I'm, I need something that's going to work super fast because I, I, I suffer from periodic acid indigestion. Uh, Tums is the answer. When I get heartburn, I use Tums, and I'm surprised how fast it works. Tums works fast, it's relief, just like that. If I wanted to get rid of heartburn fast, I'd eat a Tums. Tums works fast. French wine. Huh. Who needs it? Let, let the Swiss keep their cheese and watches. <laughs> Me. I'm American all the way. <laughs> That's why I brought my Datsun to AMCO. Sure, we can work on most foreign transmissions. Don't be surprised by the nice little extras at AMCO. Double A. MCO. There are more than 40 AMCO centers in Southern California. See yellow pages or white pages for your nearest AMCO center. Free road test, of course. Open Saturdays. There is an opinion in some circles that Old English sheepdogs can be truly appreciated only by Old English sheep. Turns out that opinion isn't shared by a group of devotees of the breed who gathered today at the Cheviot Hills Recreation Center in West Los Angeles. The event was billed as a puppy and fun match, although older Old English sheepdogs also participated in the grooming and the judging. The sponsor was the Golden State Old English Sheepdog Club, and proceeds went to the Morris Animal Foundation. The foundation, in the words of the club handout, conducts research on the dreaded condition of bloat, which strikes with little or no warning. But today there was no problem with bloat, just hair, wagon loads of it. These animals incidentally are work dogs, so pulling wagons or riding in them is neither cruel nor a novelty. The highlight of the day's activities, of course, was the judging. The man to impress was David Lee. He's from Square Coat Kennels in Washington, where he's a respected breeder of Old English sheepdogs. His judging was quick and surprisingly thorough, considering what he had to work with. Thank you. You're the one that won last week. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Can you give a kiss? Give me a kiss. Oh, yes, you are. You're a lover boy. Yes! He's a great boy. Well, Jim, Will uh, Jim Murphy, rather, is woolly enough. I'm not going to ask him to kiss I'm me. I'm not going air. to lick your face. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble with me is, you see, all the fringe is down here, and I really want it up here. You see this scar up behind me? That's the one we used last night to tell you about last night's hockey game. Now, you can update it to today just by changing the name Canadians to Flyers. Yep, the Kings got shut out twice in 24 hours by identical 3-0 scores. And to add injury to insult, watch what happened to goalie Gary Edwards in the third period. And these highlights, courtesy of NBC, you see the shot deflected up into his face, and the mask saved him. But it didn't make him comfortable. He tries to get to his feet, and you see him fall back over. 
They stopped the game to see how badly he was hurt, and here he's going to show you just where he got hurt. Take off the mask right there. But goalies aren't quite the same as you and me. Edwards shook it off and stayed in the game. I'd have been out for a month. Loss left the Kings eight points behind Montreal. It left them with not even a goal to show for their weekend trip. With the playoffs getting closer, this is no time for a slump. With all the excitement of last night's UCLA overtime win against Michigan, we didn't get a chance to tell you about the UCLA women's basketball team. Well, maybe that's just as well. The women lost the National Women's Invitational to Wayland Baptist, 79 to 41. Bruin star Ann Myers, and she's a sister of Dave Myers, well, she didn't have as good a night as Dave. She was 0 for 12 from the floor and finished with a total of one point. Wayland is a school with fewer than 1,000 students down in Plainview, Texas. And in the seven years the tournament has existed, Wayland has won it all seven times. Talk about a dynasty. Fleet Velvet.